Today we are going to go over different games and activities that you can implement in your class. In this episode, I'm going to talk about games, board games, card games. Now, if you have the resources to actually go to a store and buy some of the games I'm about to mention, then I think you'll find some of these games to be very valuable for your classes, particularly if you're teaching English as a foreign language or English as a second language. Now, I am a strong proponent of gamifying your classes, but within moderation, maybe once or twice per semester, because one, student studies have shown that gamification can be highly effective in learning a new skill. Two, it's fun for the students. Three, it takes some of the pressure off of the teachers to constantly produce new material and be on all the time for the students, like in a performance or something. Four, it's a good reinforcer and concept checker. And, and finally, it can also be a motivator for the students who witness firsthand how much they have actually learned over a period of time. So for all these reasons, I use games when I can. Now, some of the games I prefer are Scrabble, Jenga, and Crazy Eights. The last one, if you're not familiar, is a game that requires a 52-card deck. Now, I love these games because there is absolutely no prep time whatsoever for any of them. And also, these are the types of games that have a very small learning curve for the students. That is, they're easy to teach even if you're a, a particularly ineffective teacher. Now, I won't go into detail about how to play any of these games since you could just as easily Google search them. But I will say that the games I have just mentioned will serve you well. In a, in a variety of settings from, you know, medium classes to large classes, younger classes to older classes. I will also say that it's okay to modify these games to suit your needs in a given lesson. So, for example, if you're going to play Crazy Eights, you can introduce the rule that if a student is required to draw more cards, she or he may also need to provide the class with one fact about herself or himself. Or if you're playing Jenga and a student knocks over the Jenga pieces, he or she may need to sing a song, or recite a monologue, or provide 10 facts about himself. You know, maybe even in each round of Jenga you could have students provide one fact about themselves. So obviously you can spin these games any way you want to suit your needs, which is yet another reason why I find these games powerful teaching tools. Bye for now.